What's up guys? Welcome to MD Access. Um, I kind of stopped making MD Access for a little bit. I am changing it a little bit, so it's not going to be as long. It's going to be a little bit shorter, um, but it is where I'm going to talk about um, things a bit more in depth. Um, not just gaming topics, but also like video games and stuff where I analyze them and stuff. So that's kind of what MD Access is going to be now. So when it comes to news that interests me, because I'm the only one that matters here, you know what I mean? <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2 finally has a release date. And I'm not too sure about how to even take release dates because of what I'm going to talk about in this episode. But right now, it's, it's due to release on October 26, 2018. It's going to be for the PS4 and the Xbox One at launch. Here's hoping that Red Dead Redemption 2 will come to the PC as well because it looks like an amazing game. Red Dead Redemption 1 is one of my favorite games of all time, so I think everybody should be able to play this game because it's so good. Like, just oh, the setting and the story and it's just worth playing. Bioware's new IP, Anthem, was confirmed by Bioware and EA that it is being pushed to uh, 2019, most likely early 2019. The Kotaku article and other articles that came afterwards made the, the news sound a bit worrisome. But EA's CFO, Blake Jorgensen, came out and said, it's not a delay and they don't want to release on the same quarter as Battlefield. People are trying to create a story. There's a quote that I really like and applies very well in this case by Shigeru Miyamoto. A delayed game is eventually good. A bad game is bad forever. How come release dates are a thing? Like why do companies have to feel like they, they need to give a release date so early on? I think the answer is very obvious, especially the way that people are today. The way that the gaming industry, not just the gaming industry, but the movie industry, just entertainment in general, I think hype is a huge thing. In the gaming world, E3 has become this huge event where gamers tune in um, to see the world premieres. That whole connection between developer and gamer is definitely much more than it was back then because of social media. So in E3, everybody gets excited and all the publishers want to have their big um, show seller. And if they don't have anything that's coming out soon, they will announce something that's coming out two years later or maybe even more. You give people a lot of time to start forming what they think about the game before it's even out. You know, everyone's always like, who won E3? And it's like, why win? Like, why is it a competition? It's like every publisher goes head to head. And if they, if, if one publisher has more re reveals, better reveals than the other, the other one lost. They're like, just give me what you got. Like, give me a name, give me a little tiny teaser, anything, just anything to get people hyped. An example of a really good reveal was Fallout 4. I thought they I thought Bethesda did such a great job with that reveal because they revealed it at E3 and months later it was released. So nobody knew anything about this. You know, it's kind of like surprising somebody and then giving them the surprise. And and the other way around, it's like surprising somebody and it's like, you're gonna have to wait two years for the surprise though. A more recent example that I thought was brilliant, um, it's not a game, but it's a movie, but I thought this was a really, really good thing um, to maybe start introducing in the gaming world. I think gamers would go crazy about this kind of thing. Um, is the way that Cloverfield Paradox was announced. Teaser drops in Super Bowl, and then later it's like available on Netflix. And people are like, oh my god, like that's what fans appreciate. They feel like it's a gift, even if they have to pay for it. I think I remember Xbox doing this, maybe even last year in E3, where they announced a feature. I think it was like um, the the Xbox Vault where you got to play uh, 360 games and Xbox games and you could start downloading and playing them 
that day that it was announced because right now the industry news is full of negativity it's full of people getting angry at developers and publishers because of what they're doing and even if they do something good as long as there is something dirty in their past like you do not want to get anything dirty right now like nowadays with social media and everything and the mentality that's going around as good as that could be it could really affect companies and people and some people deserve it but some people don't sometimes some people fall for the for the for the bad um, decisions of others. A lot of gamers, when they see a delay, they go, okay, I want a good game, right? A lot of people do understand that, but a lot of people get really pissed. Or journalists will go on their articles and they make it this breaking news. Developer struggles to save new project as it's delayed to Tomorrowland. The next Wakamele delayed until 2019. Everybody run for the hill. If that developer is having troubles with a game, let's just say that that's true. Let's say that EA is just trying to cover up. Who cares? They need the time, then they should take the time. If they made the decision to choose to say a release date instead of holding their cards back and playing a Bethesda or a, a Blizzard or a CD Projekt Red, it'll be done when it's done. That was their decision. They want to keep the information doors open. And it's like, okay, I respect that. Thank you. You know, they're, they're keeping the flow of information open to the gamers because this is the, 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 the era of shared communication. A relationship bec between developers and gamers is something that I've always loved. Not only because of what I do, but it, I also love knowing how things are made. I love knowing how games are made and stuff like that. But for some people, knowing too much about how a game is made is not good. I am guilty of, of getting really hyped for games years, months before they come out. Don't mention that there's a Dragon Age or there's a Mass Effect coming in three years because I am going to get crazy. I'm going to lose my Shih Tzu. They start to form their own expectations. They start to form their own speculations. If developers give gamers a long time for them to start thinking of what this game's gonna be, the more people start to form ideas. So you start to get excited about a game that might not even be. Same thing happened to Andromeda. I started to come up with this idea. I was like, oh my God, oh my gosh, what if the N7 guy is the bad guy? Usually these expectations are gonna be way far off and way up here. Obviously they're gonna show us the pretties because they want to sell the game. They wanna show the best. It's like a model. A model, she wants to look her best on camera, right? And then Photoshop makes, them, makes her even look even prettier, even more perfect. And then she gets off camera, she takes off stuff, puts on her PJs, and she's like, oh, hell to the no. That's why I think that release dates, especially when they're that far out, are a bad thing. When the development isn't far enough, and when there is still room for a lot of error. Because there's a lot of things that you just can't account for when it comes to technology. And the worst mentality a developer could fall into is release date's coming. Just release it. We'll patch it. We'll patch it later. That's horrible. You are going to start to form a bad history. And if there's a delay or even multiple delays, people are keeping tabs. They're just watching developers like, hell no. Nah. What'd you say? Oh, mm. Mm, mm, mm. The Witcher 3 was delayed so many times and people were so fed up with so many delays, but The Witcher was one of those cases where it delivered. For the bugs that it had on release, imagine if it had released before the delays. It would have had a huge amount of bugs. So now with, C uh, with Cyberpunk, it seems like CD Projekt Red is keeping way more quiet and they're like, it's gonna be done when it's done. But I think developers could learn more from like Bethesda and Blizzard, specifically Bethesda, because what they did with Fallout 4 was 
what people should aim for. The best thing that they did that E3 was they said, uh, here's, look at this trailer Fallout 4, uh, 4, and it was like, and then they were like, oh, and it comes out a few months later, five months, four months later. And today you can download that um, Fallout Shelter thing, the iPad. So people are like, holy crap, like that's what you want to do. Again, you want to keep your players happy and busy with stuff. Not only for the way that gamers react naturally, because I, 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 I get hype. A lot of people don't. And, and you know, sometimes I, f I think that they're smart for not getting too hyped because how do you know that game is going to be that amazing the way that you imagine it but you can't help it sometimes it has to it comes down to personality it comes down to fandom but people get excited and that's not a bad thing that's when it comes down to the developer don't get people excited until you have something to give them bad history baggage on a developer on a on a publisher will this is this there's no doubt about this but it will kill games before they're out they will fall flat we've seen this happen and not only games but developers to not open yourself so vulnerable that you are putting your work at risk and your job because publishers if they see that a game failed we see this so much now if a game fails Sometimes even before it releases, they will shut that, that developer down. It's like they're not up for it. So if we want to support good games and developers that really have shown us that they can in the past, then I feel like we should support the, 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 the gaming industry in a different way. And I think developers should start thinking in a different way as well. Hopefully this is something that that is is looked into in the in the future because delays release dates false expectations a lot of these things will eventually for some people lead to disappointment and for the developers it will lead to more stress so that's pretty much what i have to say about this um just opinions ideas suggestions whatever please let me know in the comments down below what you guys think uh gamers developers or and or publishers could do in order to uh to improve the reception of delays so thank you so much for watching and i'll talk to you guys later